Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I think this is going to be finally the last piece of the puzzle here on our Repo 6060 on what uh, what could go wrong with it, which we expect it. Anyways, we had uh, issues with the forward and reverse solenoids. We got it driving really nice now. Uh, it wouldn't go up and down the hydraulics, so we put a new hydraulic pump on it. That fixed it a while ago. Everything's been working great. I went to turn on the PTO the other day, and the PTO did not turn on. So, I would go turn on the switch here inside the cab, and it would show revolution. Rear or the mid PTO would not work. So, to diagnose this issue, you have to turn on your PTO switch, because you want to see if it's a switch or not. And what you're going to do here, basically what happens, so you have a switch and not a lever that moves a valve, it has a solenoid. So, you're going to come down here and come right in here let me get some light see this round circle right here i'll try and get in here better with the camera this round circle right there with the pipe on it there there's see there's three 12 millimeter bolts right there in that round thing there's an o-ring behind there anyways that's your valve so your solenoid basically opens up when you turn your pto switch on and it lets pressure, this line right there where that 90 degree fitting is, that is pre constant pressure from your hydraulic pump. And when you turn the switch on inside your cab, you see that one wire right up there, that red wire? 12 volts goes to that, and it open the solenoid gets triggered and opens up. And what happens is it sends that hydraulic pressure through the line from the line into a hydraulic clutch, which turn engages your PTO. So if you're having an issue, your PTO work not working on your L series tractor, you know, highly unlikely if your hydraulics are working and power steering and everything's working fine, that you're not getting hydraulic pressure through, through this line. Sorry, it's dark. Through that line right there with the 90 degree fitting there, you probably got good pressure to it, I'm guessing. It's probably gonna be an electronic issue. Anyway, so what you're gonna do is pull that connector right there with the red on it. There's only one wire, the solenoids ground it through the transmission. So put, you know, put your electrical meter on or your test light or whatever on the transmission frame and take that red wire, put your, put your uh, um, meter in there, test light, whatever, turn on your, your dash. I like to use a meter because I can see that what voltage is there. Turn on your PTO switch with the tractor running and see what you're gonna get you know, if you got 12 volts, 13 volts, whatever it, you're going to get, probably 13 uh, with it running because you're going to be charging. Uh, if you got 13 volts there and you shut off the switch, you got zero. You turn it back on, you get 13. You know you're getting power to that solenoid and it's highly likely that it's your solenoid. You can get technical and check if there's, you know, hydraulic pressure in there, but chances are I'm willing to bet that's not your problem. What I've done is I've pulled that solenoid out of there already and I've freed it up. I had to hit it with a hammer and, you know, tap it around a bit, pulse it with a wire on a battery for quite a while. And I was just tapping ground to here, power to the connector and, you know, just tapping it away. And that is what controls your hydraulic flow there. So anyways, it's working right now that I, since I freed it up and pulsed it with some power, but this is what we're gonna replace and we're gonna show you how to do it here quick. It is Kubota part number TD1705983. Should be the same for all your L series Kubota. So I have a really clean pail right here. I just wiped it all out, made sure it's really clean as a whip. You can pull your drain plug and drain your transmission fluid. However, I don't want to drain too much. So what I'm going to do, you can take, I believe it's a um, 5 8 or so, probably like a, you know, it's probably like an 18 mil or something like that. You're going to loosen this right here, right there, that nut on there. And then up here, right, oh, this is hard to show, guys. You're going to loosen that nut right, right there whatever it is you can maybe just get an adjustable on it then what you're gonna do is go up here you're gonna need a one and a sixteenth socket or whatever that converts to in metric 
probably like 27 mil or something anyways one and 16 fits perfect on there take that bolt out of there uh, that banjo banjo bolt there and loosen that because you need this line to come loose that's in the way where, where my flashlight's shining there you need that to come loose to pull this thing out here then you're going to take your 12 mil and pull out the three bolts out of this cover and this will come out I'm going to pull this out quick. It's getting dark and show you what it looks like inside. We're out and into the shop. There's the new solenoid or solenoid, whatever you want to call it. So you're going to need a pair of snap ring pliers. Pull that snap ring right there. Do that first. And then when we pull this apart, we want to make sure that we leave it upright like this. You don't have to. It's just it'll keep parts from falling out. So I'll show you what to do. We're going to pop this one out with some snap ring pliers here, circle of pliers, and we'll show you uh, what we got here. Okay, both circ clips removed. I haven't popped anything apart. That's apart. And when you pull this top circ clip right there, this, you can see that's from me putting it back together last time anyways. You're going to pull this apart and you're going to have these two washers here. So you'll notice that these washers, you can mix them up here, it don't matter. But you'll notice that they have like a, a taper to it, a cup. So if I go like this and this and I put them together, you'll see the gap there. You have to have them opposite of each other because if they're both the same, they'll stack perfectly tight like that. You need them opposite of each other because it, when you have the circ clip in and that piece on top, see how they are right there? It puts pressure on the solenoid. So just make sure they're like that when you put it back together. Those are the only two pieces right there. And then when we pop this out, there's a little metal piece underneath here. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to shut off the camera. Okay, popped out. There's a little piece right there. See that little dimple in there right at the bottom? That will come out. You don't want that to come out. Anyways, that just popped out very, very quickly there. Comparison the old versus new. I would say that Kubota has updated the design, which we always like to see. This is all plastic in here and now it's all aluminum. So that's really nice to see that something's been updated with this part and hopefully the problem of this part being, you know, an issue has been fixed outside sir clips in that can rotate but face that upwards uh i don't even know what you call these they're like an oil filter pliers but they're a vice grip i don't know my dad found them somewhere anyways i use them to squeeze this down and get the sir clip in because obviously those two washers hold tension so make sure your sir clips seated in there and we can pop our tension off and we're ready to install this thing in the tractor again Okay, we're on. Tighten up your your uh, so your flare here. Tighten that up. And I forgot to mention there is a bracket on here. I already had it off at the other part. It's just to hold your wiring up here. Put that back on. I don't know if there's a torque spec for these. It's just an O-ring in there. I just gave them a good snug with my uh, quarter inch ratchet, a real good snug. And if you're using a 3 8 just a decent snug on those. And it's just holding this on with an O-ring, so... Tighten that up and then your one and a sixteenth banjo bolt here. Make sure you have your copper washer on each side. Give that again a good snug up on the washers there and uh, we're ready to go. I got to fill it up and all I wanted to say guys is that, or fill it back up with hydraulic fluid that I drained there into my clean pail. All I can say is having the tractor tilt it like it is right now, I have it up on these, these blocks, it made a huge, huge difference on how much fluid came out i the last time i had it drained it drained you know probably one and a half times the amount and this is you know probably only about 10 15 liters so anyways helped significantly i'm gonna fill this back up and we'll test her out all right moment of truth let's see if it works here we well, should be able to see the chain rotate there we go we're up and running well, everyone, thank you for watching. I hope this helps you get your L6060 up and running. Ours just stopped one day. I went and turned the PTO switch, one start. Like I said, I pulled it apart already and kind of freed up that solenoid with a little zapping of 12 volts and a little tapping and freed it up and got it working. I put it back together until the part came in and thought I would make this video to help everyone else. I hope this helped you. I hope it was straightforward. And yes, I did put the zip tie on that little piece of wire like factory if anybody picks that out. I don't know if it's there that or what it's there for or if it matters, but it must have mattered if it was on there. So I put another one on that new piece and we're back together and running. So 
Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Kubota videos.